um, yeah, let's just agree and pray on those lines and say, okay, God, know the words that I speak. I thank you that uh, that it's like choice silver. May it be like choice silver. May it be something precious. May it be something beautiful. Um, may it bring um, you know joy and refreshing to the hearer. And may it be useful. And may it bring grace and edify the hearer. Um, let's just pray that. Father, we, we thank you for this uh, for this day. We thank you for this morning. We, we thank you, God, that you are, um, you've given us, Lord, the option, Lord, the responsibility of speaking, Lord, words, words that bring life, words that beautify, words that strengthen, Lord, words that edify. Oh, God, we thank you that you've given us um, the responsibility, and it's such a privilege Lord, to speak those words. Father, we thank you for the ability that you've given us to communicate through words. Um, and uh, yes, Lord, we, we do not take that lightly. And this morning, even as we are reminded that the, the words of the righteous are like choice silver, God, I pray that uh, even as you've covered us with your righteousness, even as you've made us righteous, called us righteous, declared us righteous, Lord, may our words be righteous. May our words be, Lord, beautiful, to the hearer. Lord, may our words bring an impartation of grace to the hearer. Yes, Lord. Lord, in all seasons, Lord, in all Lord, challenges that we might face, oh God, Lord, may we choose to speak words that I define. May we choose to speak righteous words. Enable us to do that, oh God. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory at this time. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so today we have uh, we have Salome, Alice, and Maxon to share um, a sermon that they have prepared. So, okay, Salome is not yet joined, so I will turn this over to um, Alice. Alice, if you want to share. Yeah, sure, Pastor. After Alice, Maxon, right? Okay, okay, go ahead, Alice. Thank you. Okay, let me just so, so. share. So. We the, sorry, we that we are supposed to share last week, uh, that we're not around. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, yes, uh, and uh, yeah, just, just a minute, Isaac. Yeah, I've actually uh, rescheduled. Let me just check. Um, okay. Yeah, I've rescheduled to Friday, like Hope, William, Harrison, and Isaac. So you're okay. sharing on Friday, yeah? Okay. 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 Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Great. I think we can start off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. So, in the next 12 minutes, uh, let's just talk about praise. And of course, we will talk a little bit about plot twist as well. These are very familiar words, right? Uh, and if we really have to see, uh, the dictionary meaning of praise, it says that praise is to commend, to applaud, to express approval or admiration. Uh, it is the expression of approval and admiration for someone or something. Praise can also be a compliment, a gesture, facial expression, or form of any kind of gentle touch or hug or high five, you know, uh, that would promote the feeling of self-pride or worth and ac accomplishment in others, right? So it is nothing new to us. We have been praising many people or many stuff uh, in our everyday life. But as a believer of Jesus Christ, we also understand that we need to praise God. And praise is a vital part of our walk with God, right? So why, why is it really important that we talk and spend a lot of time on learning to praise God? What is the purpose of it? Why do we have so many books and so many publications and we do have thousands of sermons on praise and worship, right? And somewhere deep down inside, we know why. We know that, you know, Bible commands it. We know in scripture it says that 
let everything that has breath praise the Lord. We know that, you know, praise facilitates the access to God. Yes, uh, you know, we, we keep on singing. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. We know this. And we also know that praise lives where God, praise is where God actually lives. Praise is where God dwells, right? He is omnipresent God. Yes, he is everywhere at all times. Absolutely, that is correct. But when we praise, his presence become more intense. And uh, in Psalm 22, 3, it says that, you know, uh, God is enthroned upon the praises, of, uh, the praises of Israel. Also, praise chases away the despair. You know, there is no better way to beat any kind of Monday blues or any day blues than to change our focus from ourselves to God. And such kind of shift actually produces the oil of gladness instead of mourning. And it just puts us with a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. We have read about it. We have read it in Isaiah, right? Also, we, we, we very well know that praise is an effective weapon against the devil. Our praise can completely knock down all the work of our enemy. But above everything else, we know that God is worthy of it. God is the only one who's worthy of our praise, right? We know it. And we know that praise is, is a kind of declaration. And it is our thanksgiving for what he has already done for us and what he has promised to us. Praise just focuses on his character and on his wondrous works and acts and deeds. We have re read about it. We have experienced it. We have learned about it. But we completely know all this stuff, uh, all this stuff and why, why do we really need to praise God? But why? Why many a times we struggle to make it our lifestyle? We struggle to make praise and worship our lifestyle. You know, it is very easy to praise God mostly in our mountaintop experience moment. But what about those days, you know, when we don't feel like praying? when we don't feel like worshiping, when we are like super tired, frustrated and struggling with our own feelings and anger. When we pray and we see that, okay, God is not answering me at all. We feel like God is silent. And somehow we try to pacify ourselves and say, hey, I know God is listening and he's working things out for my, my good. But however, my mind, my body and my soul does not, you know, come to accept that fact. I'm talking about those moments when our heart is like really hurt and we don't feel like giving praise to God. What do we do? I would say those are the very moments, you know, when we need to praise God the most. Do you know why? Because praise is, is a matter of choice. It's, praise is always a choice we can make. Psalm 34, 1, it says that I will exalt the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. So we can choose to praise God and worship God, either we feel like it or not. We can choose to praise and worship God like Abraham, you know, when God had asked him to sacrifice his son Isaac, he chose to praise and worship God like Job. When he had lost all his riches and children, he just tore his robe, he shaved his head and fell to the ground in worship. And just like David, when he pleaded with God to save the child that Uriah's wife had born to him, and when that child died, David went straight into the house of the Lord and worshipped. They all chose to praise and worship God in the most, most difficult times of their life and in their adversity. So they chose to worship God. And, you know, we also need to understand that praise is something. Praise is the greatest gift that we can give to God. And it is not only the greatest gift that we can provide to God, but also it is our greatest weapon against our enemy. 
it may not seem natural and we may feel like uncomfortable and sometimes when we are hurting we we feel like okay i don't feel like going and praising god but still we can go ahead and praise but let's not fake about it right we can be really really honest with god cuz god already knows our heart he already knows our thought so when we don't feel like praising we can tell him but let's praise him till we really mean it god also wants us to grow more like you know to be like jesus through every kind of situation so when we praise him we can allow him to make us understand the lessons that we need to learn from any kind of situations that we have been experiencing experiencing also we can you know praise god and review the work of god in our past so when we review the goodness and provisions and his faithfulness in past we will find a kind of new strength to face our problems today and uh, we will see you know the unexpected di- direction in our story because when we praise god and when we give him our will he takes over and he will start to fight for us when we stop worrying and shift our focus to jesus all our problems will seem to be smaller god will fight for us and praise actually will remind us that god is still in control praise will help us to you know remain still in his presence and acknowledge that the battle is actually belongs to the god and we are already on the victory side right so when we praise it can also turn around the worst day of our life it can boost our spirit and put a smile on our face so if we are feeling little low we can it's okay we can turn off a worship song and sing along you know and just look around at all the blessings and just praise god cuz praise also has the ability to open up our eyes to the blessings of god we all know what happened to paul and silas the story has been narrated in ex uh, chapter 16 when they were in the prison and they started singing the chains came loose right we also know what happened the wall of jericho just collapsed and got destroyed when israelites walked around it for 7 days you know and on the 7th day joshua commanded the people to just blow the trumpet and give a loud shout so did the trumpet had any kind of special power no it didn't have the praise had the power right we could see the power of praise there so when we praise god's kingdom it just invades ours when we praise we are not just influenced by uh, the atmosphere and the situation around us and when we praise we come into the agreement with heaven and that's when the plot twist happens that's when god intervenes directly and turn our story and our situation around so let's just ask god you know to give us his strength to give us his grace to make praise our lifestyle not by just reserving a set time or a set place but also by including our normal routine just including it into our everyday moment and into our everyday life so may god bless us all and just encourage i just want to encourage all of us to you know praise him praise him in the morning praise him in the noon time right so let's just praise him in each and every situation of our life may god bless us all amen thank you thank you alice um thank you for that very timely reminder about praise um yeah that was uh, that was good you still had a couple of minutes um so it was um, yeah. it was yeah it was good good introduction and definition and characteristics of praise and um, and also praising god in difficult moments i think it was a very very good reminder that praise is a choice it's a weapon um and also i think a couple of things that really stood out for me was that um uh, uh, the reminder that it's a reminder that god is still in control right so when we acknowledge uh, the truth of who god is and uh, when we begin to um, uh, affirm that it's a reminder for us that he is still in control that he's the sovereign one 
and also the fact that um, uh, uh, scripture talks about how he reigns in the praises of his people and um, and you uh, shared about how um, there's an invasion of god's kingdom in, into our life in our life situation when we praise him and that's um, you know that's uh, that's 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 so um, true because it's uh, god reigns uh, he brings about his rule and reign and the praises among the praises of his people um, so yeah so that was good thank you um, and it was good well presented as well and uh, you can also include um, I, I think you included um, a couple of bible uh, instances uh, um, like Paul and Silas and also um, Joshua you can actually go into a, a kind of uh, depth uh, I mean you can go into the details yeah, of I was it. not sure of the time, time is it? Past, uh, mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. So uh, that would also be um, very, very good. Um, you know, when you go into the details and kind of, uh, you know, late, uh, because um, in prison, what they were experiencing, and mm, yeah. uh, and uh, despite that, that that would really help. Um, um, kind of, I think uh, sometimes our own situations resonate with that. Um, what they are going through physically, emotionally, etc. And uh, we'd be kind of drawn to that and say, okay, I'm going through the same thing, but, you know, I can choose to praise. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, yeah. Any other thoughts from um, those of us who heard? Any, any other thoughts from the class about praise? Um, okay. So, um, so maybe we'll just take a couple of minutes. Um, is Salome there? Salome is not yet there. Okay, let's take a couple of minutes to just praise God. Okay. Um, sir, sorry, sir. Yes, Maxon. Yeah, I think the, I'm going. I should present first. We are having a Lord shed maybe in ten minutes time. Oh, so I see. Okay. Maybe, yeah. oh, okay. You'll you'll have some problem with the part, is it? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Then yeah, uh, you you can go ahead, Maxon. Yeah, please. Yeah. Thank you. And. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to put the presentation. I'll be just reading because I don't have enough data for my computers. Sure. So no problem. I'll yeah. be just reading. Okay. My message is on worshiping. Mm -hmm. The heading was then only the living God must be worshipped. I crop this mess heading from Matthew's four, verse ten. It was during temptation of Jesus Christ. Satan tried to demand a worship from Jesus. Then Jesus, he turned out and chased him, saying, get, get out here, Satan. For the scripture says, you must worship the Lord your God and save only him. Which means Jesus was indicating that the only person, the only person who should be worshipped is only God. There is an, no any other God, sorry, I should say the only God to be worshipped is only the living God. Not any other gods that can be worshipped. Our living God is worthy to be worshipped. And we as believers, among all the creatures, we are responsible to worship him. That is why Jesus, in this conversation with Satan during temptation, Jesus told Satan plainly that only the Lord must be worshipped, not Satan. God only is worth to be honored in worship. Today we are going to see how we worship. Let's look at the scripture. John 4, verse 23 and 24. According to the scripture, John 4, 23 up to 24, it says, Yet a time is coming and has come now when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seek. God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship in the spirit and in the truth. This is the main focus of this we are going to look into.
God is a spirit being, and when we worship him, we must submit his worship in spirit too, and not only in spirit, also in the truth. Let's look at worship in truth mainly, how it means to worship in truth. Based on the Rema word of the worship in truth, to worship in truth, it encompasses the following. A, it shows that when we are worship in truth, we proclaim that the worship should be done solely to only our God. That means we must worship one God only. John 4 verse 23. We should not worship other gods and also the living God. The, our God is jealousy. Don't want people to mix when worshiping. When we are mixing in worshiping, worshiping Satan and also the living God, God is not happy with it. And that is not a true to worship in truth. Our second, second is uh, our worship should be through Jesus Christ. When we see John 4, 14 verse 6, the scripture has revealed Jesus being the way, the truth, and the life. And no one came through the Father, God, except through Jesus Christ. This scripture opened up us that our worship should be submitted through Jesus Christ. And it is only through Jesus that we are truly able to worship God. Which means if we say we are, we are worshiping God, we submit our worship through Jesus Christ. Remember, everything was made through Jesus Christ according to John 1 verse 3. Everything was made through him. Without him, nothing has been made that was, that this was made. And Jesus being the way, when we are worshiping, our worship should go to the Father through Jesus Christ. Because we are enabled to worship to the Father through him without Jesus. We don't have a choice to worship the living God. It's only through him we are able, we, are in, we do enjoy worshiping through Jesus Christ. The third one, true worship, is bowing our head, heads and lives before the Lord and acknowledging his supreme lordship even in, in our hard situation or temptations. If we say we are true worshippers, we should worship unconditionally. We should worship no matter how our situation is. Whether we have been just robbed, we should think about worshiping God. Whether we have just uh, experienced blessings, we should worship God. We should not worship God because things have turned right, when things have turned worse, then we should not worship. No, that is not a true worshiping. It's God demands a true worship. That means we should be a worshiper of any moment, any time. Whatever we want, whatever we have a time, we should worship him only, no matter our situation has turned which position. Also, let's see that verse saying we should also worship in spirit. What does it mean to worship in spirit? The Bible is also telling us that when we worship in spirit, that means we worship from our heart, from our innermost being, with everything in within us. Worship is not a religious thing. Neither the action that we can put our skills into. When worship 
in spirit, we submit our heart, our spirit being to the Lord, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit guides us into the gate of holies, holy of holies, in spirit as recorded in Psalm 100, verse 1 up to 5. <coughs> Sorry, I'm having flu. The Holy Spirit, no. When we either sing, where we either sing a new song to the Lord, when worship God, focus on our heart, not on the, our actions, all postures. That means when we are worshiping, we are submitting our heart to the Lord. And the Holy Spirit is there to guide us to make a holy worship because our worship should be holy. If we are not worship guided by Holy Spirit, we are not doing, we are not worship in spirit and also we are not worshiping in truth. Because to worship in truth, it doesn't, it means first we should worship in spirit and we should do the right thing of worshiping. Let's look on Matthew 5, verse 8. This verse is telling us about people, go, people, they are coming near to God with their mouth and honor God with their lips, but their heart are far from God. It was like a this scripture is like a complaint. God is telling the people that this, that people are worshiping God with their only mouth. They are not dedicated to worship. They don't take their spiritual being to worship. Because if God is in spirit, we should also communicate with him in the spirit too. And this worship of lips and mouth might be the common worship that are done today in the churches, but let's dwell on worshiping in truth and in spirit. We should bear in mind that when we are worshiping, it is our spirit reach out and cry out to the spirit of God. At this point, I can say that worship is a spiritual activity where Holy Spirit guides a man and it is only worship that we become more aware of and experience God's presence. We as Christians, our worship is different from any, from every kind of worship because it has to be made possible through Jesus Christ. For Jesus was slain with his blood. He purchased us for God. When we look at Revelation 5 verse 9. And worship has to be catalyzed by power of Holy Spirit. As recorded in Philip 3 verse 3. We are those who worship by the Spirit of God. And it depends on his leading and enabling. That is why we need to know the truth of worshiping and worship the way we know, which is the worship in truth and in spirit. Hallelujah, class. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, Maxon. It's amazing how... Um... Yeah, Alice spoke about praise and you shared about worship. And um, thank you once again for that uh, very timely reminder uh, from John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, the Lord Jesus talking about worship and you know that reminder about spirit and truth worship, which is the which, which is really the core of worship, right? Um thank you. So that was good. Um so it was scripture right through. And some of the points that you made very, very pertinent 
um, the fact that worship is exclusive, the fact that worship is through the Lord Jesus, the fact that worship is unconditional. Um, yeah, so all these were very, um, uh, I think, very edifying to um, that you should share that, very encouraging and a reminder. Um, anything that the cl class would like to share? Uh, and Maxon, I uh, hope you get well soon. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you, Pastor. Right. God bless. Um, okay. So let, why don't we just take a minute? Okay. Uh, Isaac, are you uh, ready to share today? Did you come prepared to share? Um, Isaac Akinlabi? <laughs> yes, I I can. Okay. Uh, um, okay, so if yeah. that is a fine, then, uh, you know, I, just give me a minute, and after that you could share, right? Okay, no problem. Okay, okay. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just spend some time, just um, spend a couple of minutes just praising, uh, based on what we heard, you know, praise and worship, and maybe some of us are going through some difficult moments, like... Um, like maybe uh, like in prison, maybe we feel that we are all hedged in and, uh, you know, constrained and um, just held back by so many things and we need to really break out of it, right? Maybe our spirit is down, maybe emotionally we are down um, and we kind of sense that heaviness and, uh, you know, I just want you, want you to go ahead and go ahead and praise God because he's worthy go ahead and praise God because of, uh, because he's uh, he's the way the truth and the life you know just take some time to just praise him right uh, let's do that right away let's do that right away wherever you are just uh, open your mouths and uh, let's praise uh, let's begin to pour out praise to our God let's bring the sacrifice of praise to our God um, let's bring the sacrifice of uh, praise and worship let's begin to just gaze upon his holiness, his loveliness, and uh, and just let's just adore him, thank him, praise him at this time. Father, we we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you for who you are, God. So we bring our sacrifice of praise before you, Father God. We thank you, God. You are worthy of praise. You are worthy of worship, Lord. You are worthy, O oh Father God. Yes, you alone are worthy, Lord. You alone are worthy, O oh God. For we can come and lay down our lives before you, Father. God. Oh God, we, we just do that, Lord, in our in our out of our spirit, Lord, in our innermost being, oh God, we pour forth, Lord, our praise, oh God, as your word declares, Lord, not just with our lips, oh Father God, but from our innermost being, oh God. Lord, no matter what season of life we are in, no matter what is happening in our lives, Father God, right now, oh God, Lord, we, we praise you because you are worthy. We praise you because that is, uh, Lord, you stated, oh Father God, you described yourself, Lord, as the one who is worthy of all praise and glory and honor, and you are who you say you are, Lord, that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the all-powerful one, O oh God. You are, O oh God, the healer. You are the provider. You are, O oh God, uh, the God of righteousness. You are the victory banner over us, O oh Father God. We thank you, Lord. You are, uh, you are our peace, Lord. We praise you. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Yes, Lord. You are the one who blesses us, and you are the one who is good and good all the time, O oh Father God. And you are the one when you bless, you add no sorrow with it, Lord. We bless your name, we bless your name, O oh Lord. You are the faithful one, O oh God. You are the faithful one, O oh Master. Your thoughts towards us, Lord, are thoughts to prosper us and never to harm us, O oh Father God. Oh, we bless your name, we bless your name. We give you all the praise, we give you all the glory at this time. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Okay, amen. Right. Over to you, Isaac, if you can um, take 12 minutes to share what you have prepared. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Talking about we are created in God's image. Uh, we are created in God's image. And I, want, I want us to look at, uh, read it from, I don't have my presentation, so I will be doing it uh, without, uh, without presenting any slide. So Genesis chapter 1, uh, if we read verse 26 and 27 to 28, 
the God does God make us understand. We quickly read it. It says, and God said, Let us make man in our and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the flocks of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creepy thing that creep upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, male and female created he them. And God blessed them and said, Unto them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the head, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the flocks of the air, and over every creep of things that move upon the earth. Uh, the expression of God was made manifest to us. Uh, looking at this uh, chapter 1, verse 26 to 27, saying that God created man. But there are specific things that we need to look into when we talk about creation. Uh, that he created man in his own image. And if we had uh, the, what is the image of God, we know that God is a spirit. That is, man is created as a spirit being that lives and can express the way God expressed. But also, the Bible makes us understand that we are created in his likeness. We are created to function like him. Likeness is talking about the functionality of God. But God has created man on earth. There are things that God has made us understand that everything that God created, he created them by spoken words. It means that he created them by his thoughts. God has to think, and after having a thought of creating something that is new, that has never been before, he spoke. We, the Bible makes us understand from Genesis chapter 1 down to uh, that verse 24 that he created the sun, he created the moon, he created the animals, he created uh, the, the animals on land, in the sea, and every other thing. But there is a reason why God has created man in his own image. Why he has not created man in the image of the animals or similarity with any other creation. But the Bible says God created man in his own image. I was having a conversation with uh, some Muslim people, and then um, they were having their own celebration, so I was able to uh, just move closer to them, and I was having a conversation with them. They want to combat me, so we end up uh, having a conversation. And then when he was talking, he was talking much about God, and I asked him, do you know this God? Have you heard this God before? And he was like, no, I've not heard the God before, but uh, I know that uh, God has spoken through his word. But I said to him, I said, God can speak just like he wants to speak to you, just like you have any other relationship with any other person. He said, no, God cannot do that. Yes, he has spoken through some of the prophets. And I said, we are created in his image. That was what brought up a discussion. He said, no, we are not created in the image of God. How can I be comparing us with God? Because the understanding was not given to them to understand that there is no way man can exist without being created. And the word of God makes us understand that we are created in his image. And there is a reason why God had created man in his image on earth. It says that what? That we should have dominion. And if a man is not having dominion on every creation of God, it means that we have missed our responsibility. He said, we should have dominion over every other thing that he has created. One important thing about God is the dominion, the rulership, the ability to exercise authority over everything that he has created. He created everything both on earth and in heaven, but he has given man the dominion on earth, everything on earth. And Bible because understand that what? We shall have dominion over the fishes of the sea, over the flocks of the air, and over every corporate thing. Today, uh, we are not having dominion. Some of us are afraid of all kinds of uh, animals. We are afraid of exercising our, our authority over everything. Part of those things that God has blessed man with, in which is the characteristics of God, the nature of God, is what is what is spoken about in verse 28 of that Genesis chapter 1. It says that what uh, that we should be fruitful, 
uh, multiply, replenish the head, subdue it, and have dominion again. It's exercising dominion. But there is a difference between when we say created in God's image and formed. There is two, is a two different word. We are formed from the dust of the earth. God formed man. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, make us understand that God formed man out of the dust of the earth. But he created man in his image. And that's why when man dies, uh, the spirits leave the body. The spirit that is created in the image of God is what gives life to the body. So the spirit leaves the body and goes to meet God. And the, the one that is formed, just like you, you form any image, is uh, stay uh, on the ground. But I want us to also look at the new creation. When we look at when God created man, he created man as a perfect being, uh, full of all the nature and the attributes and the glory. But when man fell in Genesis chapter 3, talks about that we lost the glory of God. And that's why Jesus, who is uh, this, uh, this new Adam, and the Bible makes us understand that also we are created in the image of Jesus. So we are created in that new Adam. That new Adam has some characteristics that we can look into. We look at what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, uh, if anybody is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. He said, behold, all things become new. All things. There are specific things that we can look into in that particular verse. It says, if any man, if that man, any man, it doesn't matter the color, uh, the tribe, the, the place where the man is, if any man is in Christ, uh, he is a new creation. Is now a new creation created in God. And if you look at this new creation, um, uh, Nicodemus was asking, how can this new creation be uh, that will be in the nature of Christ and exercise the same authority that Christ has? And in John chapter 3, uh, Jesus was making it known to, um, to Nicodemus. He says, if any except a man be born again, he must be born of the spirit and of water. He cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot be like God. Until a man is born again, that is when he becomes like God. He's like God on earth. Not like man is not like God before, but now he's full of the nature of God. He's full to exercise the authority that God has given man. So if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, there are things that are passed away. There are things that are passed away because behold, all things become new. There are some specific things I want us to also look into. When we talk about being created in the image of God, is also looking at what the Bible says in, uh, in Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, if you look at uh, verse 3 and 4, I'm just going to quickly read that. Verse 3 and 4 now. You see, blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. But verse 4, I want us to look at it. According as he has chosen us in him before the world was created, to, that we should be holy without blameless before him in love. This new creation created in the image of God is now holy is now blameless. This new creation that is created in God. That's why we can say we are righteous because we are created in the image of God. God is righteous. God is holy. So it's not like we are trying to be holy. We are holy. We are having that nature of God in us. Nature to be holy. We don't find ourselves trying to work to be holy. We find ourselves being holy. There is no walking, I'm walking to be holy. No, you are being holy. Your nature is being holy. When we talk about man being sinful, we talk about a nature of a sinful nature. That is, he expresses sin. He's doing it naturally. But when we talk about now, a new created man that is created in the image of Christ, he finds himself to be holy finds himself saying no to sin naturally without 
uh, blemish. The Bible says without blemish in love. I want us to look at uh, Ephesians chapter 2, two uh, looking at that new created man, that new created man that the Bible is talking about. It says uh, in verse 10, it says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should work in them. He said, we are his workmanship. Now, the new created man uh, has become uh, the one that can express the nature of God on earth. We are his workmanship. We are the one expressing his works. We are the one to demonstrate the art of God to the whole world. He said, we are created in Christ. There is a reason why the Bible is making us understand that we are created in Christ. Uh, some other people can say, oh, uh, they, they worship other God. They will say, oh, this is my father. Oh, I'm the God. Uh, I'm the ch- we are children of this social so God. We are the children of this social so God. But when we talk about Christ, we are, we are talking about that. The um, Bible says that in him we live and we dwell and we have our being. In him, in Christ, we live. In Christ, we we dwell and we have a bit. So with this understanding of high having the image of Christ, we put us into the authority that Christ wants us to walk in. If once we begin to understand that uh, we have the image of Christ, we are I'm created in the image of God, uh, I will, we will not be walking in the authority that God wants us to walk in. Uh, and that's why you look at Isaac. Yeah, time is up. You can conclude now. Yeah. Okay. So, um, with this understanding, it's very important for us to begin to walk in the authority of Christ. And I pray that God will bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. That was wonderful. Praise God for that reminder again um, from Genesis and about the image and created in this image and in Christ. It's, it's wonderful that you brought that complete picture uh, um, right from creation, the fall, and in Christ, uh, the cross, how we are redeemed and restored. And, wow, thank you. Thank you for the reminder. So blessed. I just wanted to share that, uh, you know, we've been putting these uh, videos up in the e-learning platform as well. And, uh, you know, some of the students uh, wrote back saying that they've been blessed listening to all your presentations. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to encourage you. Uh, uh, just wanted to share that, actually, that uh, whatever you prepared uh, and shared, it's been a blessing to the other uh, students as well right so thank you so much um we'll uh, yeah we'll meet again on wednesday and um so whoever was uh, scheduled for wednesday i think harrison is part of it uh, i'm not sure uh, who else yeah you can come prepared please um and uh, yeah looking forward to uh, friday friday right okay so god bless thank you have a great day bye bye I'll be ready on Friday, sir. Uh, Right, Harrison. Thank you. Thank you so much.